Hey everyone, Rick here, and I just got another package in the mail today. This is from CoolStuffInc.com, uh, and I just love shopping there, as many of you know. I'm doing the, rev uh, the unboxing on the floor today because the rest of the room is a little messy. I have been going hog wild on playtesting different 200-point Mage Knight armies recently, and to my surprise... There have just been some really bizarre results. I've tried to make an all Amazons army from the Black Powder Rebels, and it just did not go over well. I tried it out twice, once against uh, this Knights Immortal army that I came up with, and the first time, though, I played it against uh, these, uh, mainly from the Elemental Guild, but with a couple of Mage Spawn trees. I just threw together this army that was just basically all plants, and <laughs> so far this army is 2-0, and oh, once against um, a, a really heavily uh, heavy cav cavalry orc army, and then again against the Amazons, and I just could not believe that. But yeah, they pulled it through. This is basically just the standard layout that I've been concocting all of this on. So these four armies here are the ones that have been doing well. They're undefeated, all four of these, so far against other opponents. And then I'm going to play them against each other and see what ends up happening there. But yeah, those are all 200-point armies. Just kind of basically rule refresher games. But anyway, the whole point of this video was this package from Cool Stuff Inc. that I just received. And they recently had a sale, it was a level up sale, where everyone got basically the equivalent of, I think it was a level 5, or whatever level you were at, it bumped you up a level or something like that. Anyway, I'm already at the 5% level, so this ended up being a 6% discount on everything at their website, which already is incredibly low priced. I thought this was as good a time as any to grab some of these games that I have been waiting for for a while, including this. This just bizarre experiment that has become 504. And people will say, well, I would rather just have one really good game than 504 basic mediocre games. And I understand where you're coming from, but seriously, just... The fact this exists is exciting enough for me to add to my collection. And so that is just too cool. And so there it is. Next up, we have a new Richard Garfield game. You'll know him from as the creator of Magic the Gathering. And he's branched out and made some really good board games recently. And I am not too much of a fan of his other titles, just because they aren't fantasy enough for me. But this Treasure Hunter game with some uh, drafting, as I understand it, uh, looks and sounds really neat. And that's a recent release. Then from AEG, we have Dice City, a new dice allocation game set in kind of a medieval theme. So that just sounded really neat. It's kind of more of a gamer's game of um, Machi Koro. And, let's see, next up, this, I really picked this up because of uh, Richard Hamm. You'll know of him as Rado, if you ever uh, watch any of the Rado Runs Through reviews. And his enthusiasm is just way too infectious. And I picked up this, Automania, because his review made it sound so much fun. So it's kind of a lighter version of Kanban, which was an automotive assembly line, really heavy Euro game. But this, you are developing new cool cars in your own factory, and it just looks a lot brighter and a little bit simpler than the heavy Kanban game. Next up, we have Awesome Kingdom. I have had my eye on this for a little while just because of its fantasy theme, but uh, it had recently received a pretty good review from the, the folks at the Dice Tower, so I always uh, pay attention to what they have to say about games. 
And then next we have a game that I already own, but this is Mythotopia, uh, the limited edition. And I was so foolish when I originally uh, picked up the regular base game of Mythotopia from Cool Stuff Inc. I did not even realize there was a limited edition. And what does this edition have different? Wooden pieces. So a lot of the little tokens are replaced with wooden pieces. So uh, this I probably would not have picked up because I already have the other uh, regular game and there's nothing wrong with it. But this was on their daily deal plus the level up discount so it ended up being like 20 something dollars and I thought just for the upgraded components alone sounds good to me and then I picked up Wrath of Dragons which was actually I just recently heard about this from Tabletop Gaming News which is a really great website people should take a look at for new releases a lot of the time it's new kickstarters but sometimes when companies like Catalyst Gaming Labs decide to put out a board game themselves without crowdfunding, Tabletop Gaming News is on top of that also. So this is kind of a Euro game, a fantasy Euro game about dragons destroying things, so obviously right up my alley there. And this was recently released too, so I was glad I caught that um, when Tabletop Gaming News posted about it, and then... Cool Stuff Inc. just happened to recently get it in stock. Next up, oh, I'm so excited for this. I have Legends of Andor up there. And this, finally, Cosmos has uh, taken over Legends of Andor. And they have begun releasing expansions for it. The expansions used to be only in non-U.S. languages. Or non-U.S. Non-English languages. And so now they are coming out with the expansions in English. That is so exciting. Apparently there was a problem with the other expansion because they were coming out with two. This one and one other one. And the other one got recalled. So I'll have to pick that up later. And then a game I had actually been hearing about for a while and had my eye on it one time when it was called, I guess it is still called Melee. For some reason, I thought they were changing the name to Epics or something like that. But I saw this back when it was a lot simpler and looked and did not look as bright and colorful. And I'm glad I held out until it released, until they released this kind of version of it. But it is a fairly simple game, and it's received a lot of good reviews from people I respect online. So that's always a reassuring. And then we have the newest copy, or the newest, I don't know if this is really, a, it's kind of an expansion, but a standalone game also. The Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards, Rumble at Castle Tentakill. And I have the original version of the game somewhere around here. Don't ask me to find anything around here at this point. And I can't remember if this is the second or the third standalone game of this, but this is so cool. And there's a great, uh, what do you call it? What's Will Wheaton's show online? Tabletop, I guess I think it's just called, or something like that. And he did an episode of this, and it was just hilarious. But I was, and not to sound like a hipster, but I was a fan of Epic Spell Wars even before the Tabletop episode came out. And so then uh, they came out with, I think this is the third. I could have sworn there was another one between the original base game and this. But maybe not. Maybe this is just the second one. If I ever find where I have it on my shelf, I can... I could probably give you a better, and you can probably see it somewhere right now, and just shout out to me where it is. And then this is my only Steffenfeld game, because you know I'm all about fantasy theme, and Steffenfeld really doesn't dabble too much in fantasy theme. But this game had been out of print for a long time, so now Tasty Minstrel Games reprinted it. And I can now say I own a Steffenfeld game. How exciting is that? 
Is there anything else in here? Looks like there's a couple more things. Oh my gosh, this is it, folks. This is the game I have been waiting for. The Bloody Inn. Oh my gosh, this sounds and looks so cool. You are uh, the owners of this shady old inn, and your goal is to rob and kill as many residents, or, uh, yeah, patrons as you can. So they'll all be in rooms, and throughout the night, you're going to go and kill them, and you have to bury the bodies, and it's all about managing the the killing and the hiding the bodies of these poor people, and also bribing local law enforcement to help you out, and using poor little peasant children to aid you. Uh, so this just looks so much fun. Another uh, Rado Runs Through review of this just sold me on it. Check that run throughout if you want a good idea of how this goes. But just the artwork in this and the theme and the fairly simple but pretty complex and punishing gameplay. Um, if you do not hide the bodies appropriately when law enforcement come, you are going to be in big trouble. Now here's a game I honestly did not think that I would pick up, Dungeon of Fortune. I already own a couple copies of Dungeon Roll. This basically removes the dice and adds cards. And I'm thinking to myself, why would I ever want a version of a game that removed the dice? That just did not sound appealing to me. But then I watched a Dice Tower review of it, and I thought, well, it's similar, and maybe it might fix an issue or two I had with the Dice version. So, and it was very inexpensive at Cool Stuff, Inc. Plus, it's another fantasy game. So, I couldn't control myself, even if I tried. Is there anything else in here? Yes. There's also... Castellan. Now, this is the third in the reprinting of this whole Aniverse game trilogy. And I have the other two up. Oh, sorry for my finger. Sylvian and Anirim. Now, these are great games for... I'm going to need to zoom back out. For solo gamers. And so here is the third game in that... Uh, so, uh, what do you call it? Theming or universe of games. There is a great YouTuber called Solo McLaughlin who did a single player run through of Anirim. And it would be really cool if she did the other ones also. I don't know if she ever did. Actually, yeah, she did Sylvian, so I wonder if she'll do Castellan. Okay. Now that is officially it for this unboxing. And here is another pile of games that I'm going to have to try to squeeze in here somewhere. And that's what I've been doing. It's become a game in and of itself, trying to squeeze and reshuffle these games around so that I can put more games in. And so far I've been fairly successful, but I've also started to accumulate a pile in other places. What I'm thinking about doing is removing a lot of this Dungeons and Dragons attack wing stuff and all this Crow's Master stuff and just putting it in a bin or something somewhere else to free up these cubes for more games. But that's what I will have to do. But until then, as always, thank you so much for watching and until next time.